We've all been there. You're playing a game that you've never played before and something seems familiar. But that can't be, right? You just started playing. Until you realize that you have played this game before because the new one is just a cheap knockoff. Hey guys, Arcade Cloud here, and today we're counting down our top 5 worst video game ripoffs of all time. If you're new to our channel, go ahead and subscribe. It's free, you know. Make sure to comment down below and let us know what we missed on this list and what some of your most hated ripoffs are. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with some friends. That's also free. Starting us off today at number 5 is Ms. Pac-Man. What, you thought Ms. Pac-Man was officially licensed? Well, technically it was, but not by Namco at first. Midway, Pac-Man's original North American publisher, was pacing around the room waiting for Namco to finish their sequel, when a few young entrepreneurs were beginning to realize that arcade owners didn't want to spend thousands of dollars on new arcade cabinets to keep people coming back to their arcades. Anyway, these young modders started a company called General Computer Corporation. Nice, distinct name, guys. These young fellows saw a market for plug-in chips to existing arcade games that converted the old games into slightly altered new ones for a fraction of the cost of a new arcade machine. They started developing a mod for Pac-Man called Crazy Auto, which basically just looks like Pac-Man finally evolved from Cell Stage in Spore and got some freaky new legs. Ew. Get. Put those back in. Gross. Anyway, GCC was so proud of their mod, they tried to sell it to Midway. And this is the important part. Midway actually signed the deal behind Namco's back, releasing it with a few tweaks as Miss Pac-Man, which became one of the most popular arcade games, ending up being better than Super Pac-Man, the sequel Namco had been developing that Midway just couldn't wait for. In the long run, we think Midway made the right call. But here's a twist. When Midway tried making their own altered Pac-Man game, Baby Pac-Man, GCC tried to sue Midway for the idea of a Pac-Man family. And what became of GCC? Well, they make printers now. Yeah, that's how that went. Imagine suing the company that should have been suing you for ripping off their product for ripping off your ripoff by making a sequel to the product you ripped off. What is this inception level ripoff circle? I suppose making printers is less confusing than meddling with beloved trademarked characters for a living. What a complete 180 from video games. They essentially created Ms. Pac-Man, and now they're making label makers. Maybe they'll make a big comeback someday, but I doubt it. Heading up to number four, we have Wii ripoff consoles. Yes, that's plural for a very good reason. After Nintendo released the money printing machine we know today as the Wii, the console that got kids and grandparents alike off the couch and playing games together, many companies that manufacture cheap electronics started to take notice. The thought process was simple, I'm sure. Hey, if they can make a best-selling white box with some sticks you swing around that look like tiny TV remotes, we can too. And boy, did they ever. Look at all these Wii clones. The V? Are you kidding me? The Zone? The Reactor? The Wii Wii? <laughs> when does it end? Oh, and don't forget everyone's favorite, the V2. Can you imagine if this happened to the GameCube? We'd see companies scrambling to make game consoles in traditional shapes. Imagine the Game Pyramid or the Game Sphere. Okay, to be fair, that last one already exists in Drake and Josh. Dan Schneider, you've got some real foresight into bad ripoffs of the future. Maybe open up a fortune telling business soon and tell us when we're gonna start seeing Switch ripoffs, huh? Call us. While we're on the subject of the Wii, our number three spot goes to Doolu Doobie Star, or as we like to call it, Super Doolio Galaxy. Oh, it can't be that similar, right? Okay, take a look at the hub world. Mm hmm. Now the stage select. Okay. The health bar? Yep. And uh, that planet gravity mechanic comes into play. Hmm. Yeah, you get the point. To be honest, this is one of the most shameless ripoffs of a game we've ever seen. Of a great game, too. It hurts. Of course, mimicry is the highest form of flattery, but this game doesn't have the most flattering aspects. First of all, it's pretty linear, not very open world, and don't even get me started on the character designs. They look like they were modeled on a very, very low budget. And take a look at this Kamek ripoff. Whoa, actually, better not. That, that's the stuff of nightmares right there. Jeez. Moving on to number two on our list. Drum roll, please. Pong. Yep, the game hailed as the first video game actually isn't even close to that. 
Pong was actually a cheap knockoff of table tennis, a game developed over six long years by a single programmer and designer, Ralph Baer, who has been exploring the possibility of games being displayed on a monitor or television since 1951. He was a true pioneer, releasing table tennis in 1972. Unfortunately, Atari, with their giant team of programmers and designers at their disposal, released Pong the very same year as an improvement over our good man Ralph's hard work. It must have been one of the biggest slaps in the face to him, seeing a giant company make the game that took him six years in a few months, and better too, and have it go on to sell infinitely better than table tennis ever would. If it wasn't for Ralph Baer, however, Atari might not have ever made Pong, which truly marked the beginning of a booming industry of video games. Atari would also be later credited for almost single-handedly destroying the North American video game market with the great video game crash of 1983. Just 11 years after stealing Pong, they get their instant karma. Well, maybe less instant than you'd think. Kind of like if instant coffee took over a decade to brew. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, Pong. So Magnavox, the company responsible for publishing Table Tennis, actually sued Atari over Pong and won the lawsuit. They didn't ask Atari for anything other than a one-time licensing fee, though. Atari paid the fee, and then they made more bank off of Magnavox's product than anybody was expecting. Missed opportunity for Magnavox, truly, to earn a percentage of all profits. They wouldn't have crashed and burned so badly. Well, to be fair, they're still around making TVs and other electronics. But do you own any Magnavox products? I don't think so. Before we get to number one, we want to quickly rapid fire through two honorable mentions. These are ripoffs that are just as bad as the ones on this list, but don't have quite the backstory as some of the other numbers on this list. The first honorable mention is Final Combat, which is a Team Fortress 2 ripoff. Just look at this trailer. This is Meet the Heavy. This isn't even funny, this is just a plain old ripoff. We envy their lack of shame. And number two on our honorable mentions is the notorious Legend of Titan, an Overwatch ripoff. This is not Overwatch gameplay, believe it or not. No, this is actually gameplay from Legend of Titan, which, let's be clear, is the real Overwatch clone. Leave Paladins alone, we're serious. And finally, number one on our list today is going to be Angry Birds. Yep, who knew the iconically angry faces of mobile gaming were one of the industry's biggest ripoffs? I don't know a lot about you, but I remember my days of online Flash games like it was yesterday. Nitrome, Addicting Games, Newgrounds, and Cool Math when the teacher wasn't looking. Those were the days, and obviously the team over at Rovio thought so too, because their massive smash hit mobile game Angry Birds is actually just a huge ripoff of a free Flash game called Crush the Castle. Obviously the similarities are very apparent on the surface. You launch projectiles, or big cartoon birds, at buildings that aren't the most structurally sound in order to get to the enemies inside the walls. But if you actually play Crush the Castle, you'll see just how shameless these birds are. Bear with us a little bit here, we're getting somewhere. What are the different birds you can throw in Angry Birds? Well, a standard bird, a big bird, a small bird that splits into three birds when you tap or click, a bomb bird? Anyway, what are the projectiles in Crush the Castle? Oh, a rock, a big rock, a small rock that splits into three smaller rocks, a bomb. Hmm. Surely Angry Birds was a revolutionary enough idea to sell well over three billion games, make a second fortune in merchandise and toys alone, and to get a feature-length officially licensed movie? We don't think so. These things even surpass Minions in their mass popularity, a feat nobody thought would be possible from a simple reskin of a Flash game. For its massive success, despite its ripoff status, it gets the top spot on our list, no question about it. There you have it folks, our list of the top 5 worst video game ripoffs of all time. Do you agree? Did we miss something? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for more great videos from Arcade Cloud every other day. Take care and game on.